on YouTube, welcome back to SD Supercars and welcome to a brand new video. So today, very kindly, I've been chucked the keys to a BMW 335D X-Drive and it is a very, very highly spec car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look, walk around the car, take a look at the spec it's, it's got. There's a couple of tweaks the owner's actually done and the car will then be back on the channel once we film this today we've gone out for a drive and it will then be back after the 29th of january because it's actually getting some lowering springs put on it because as standard the 335d actually comes with se springs so i don't know if you'll be able to tell but if you look at the gaps you can see it's actually really high because it sits on se springs so yeah lower it make it a little less floaty and uh, we'll get it back on the channel just to see what that difference is like but yeah, to begin with, let's take a look around the car because as I mentioned, it is extremely well specced. So yeah, let's check it out. So if we start off by taking a look around the exterior of the car, first off, you will notice straight away the colour. So the colour is actually Tanzanite blue, which is an individual option from BMW. So not a cheap one, but it's absolutely stunning. Today, because we're overcast, it's raining, it's a bit miserable. It looks dark, it looks deep, but when the sunlight comes out it changes completely so if we just take a, a little walk around to the front of the car you'll see it's got the black optics grill fitted if i come down here you'll see it's got xenon lights so this car's actually got the m sport plus kit fitted to it which gives you the xenon lights and then coming around to the side it gives you the 19 inch alloys which I must admit look lovely, but as I was talking about, there's, there's that gap, it's absolutely massive. So the lowering springs that are going on it, the Ibex should just bring that down a little bit. It gives you the M Sport Plus brakes, so the bigger brake kit. And then on the inside, you get Harman Kardon as part of that package as well. A little bit. Then obviously on the rear, you've got the matching M Performance brakes. And then if I come round, you'll see this car actually has a little lip spoiler on the boot fitted it's perfectly color matched and actually I, honestly i think it looks rather good it just makes it look a little bit different from every other three series on the road but yeah the highlight of the exterior for this car definitely is that color it is absolutely beautiful so that's the exterior of the car um obviously it's raining it's not not the best day to be filming but you know what today's the day i've got the car so what i'll do now is i'm just going to jump inside so we can take a look at the interior and talk through some of the interior options but also some of the tweaks this car has had so yeah catch you on the inside so i've jumped in the car and yeah i'm just going to take a look around some of the interior options this car has got because it is very very well specced and then we're going to get on the road and go for a bit of a drive to see how it actually drives and how the x drive system is compared to rear wheel drive so first off it's got the harman kardon which obviously as i mentioned is part of the m sport plus package to to match that it's got the professional media so that gives you the larger screen up there and the touchpad button down here which is very similar to the one series it's got the extended instrument cluster the all important option this car has got which makes it night and day different is the adaptive suspension so that means when you cycle through the different modes which are obviously eco pro uh, comfort sport and sport plus it, ch it not only changes the steering the throttle response and the engine mapping and gearbox mapping what it also does is changes the dampers as well um honestly it makes such a difference you can really notice the difference between the likes of comfort and sport for example so that is a key option then other than that you've kind of got your anthracite headlining which i believe was an option you've got heated seats it's got front and rear parking sensors some of the things the driver's actually done to it so he's had a couple of coding options done as well so he's had the alpina flash on the gearbox which apparently he claims has made it night and day difference I'll be honest, I can't remember what the gearbox was like on the day he picked it up, but what I will say now is it is sharp, it is up and down the box, it's great, it's very, very responsive. So that's definitely helped. 
he's had the 2017 maps put on the car with sorry that that car said it was an rs1 when it's clearly not um he's had the 2017 map updates with lifetime updates so that will update forever he's had an ecu flash as well and then he's also done some little bits himself so he's activated the rear drls he's introduced the m performance startup logo on both the main pro nav screen but it also says m performance down on the extended instrument cluster um, he's made it beep and unbeep on unlock He's added a lap timer, so basically there are various coding options you can do. And to be honest, I might do a video on it because it might be of interest. If it is of interest, let me know in the comments below because I can actually do a video on coding some of these things. And yeah, so he's added his personal touches to it, but all in all, it's a very, very highly spec car. And most importantly, it does have that adaptive option ticked. So I think that covers the interior and I think it's about time I set some cameras up and we went for a drive. So I'll catch up with you when we're on the road. I'm now on, on the road and I just thought, for anyone who doesn't know what this car is, what it's about, just to give a quick overview of what a 335D X drive is. Obviously being X drive, that means four wheel drive. That's BMW's implementation of a four wheel drive system. On this car, it is rear bias, so it's 60-40 ratio as standard. And you can feel that, generally. Generally, it doesn't, feels like a four wheel drive car, but there's definitely, you can feel that rear bias, particularly when you change the mode up and put it in Sport Plus. It's a six cylinder, twin squad turbocharged engine, diesel engine up front. And it's pushing out, I'm pretty sure, about 313 horsepower and 630 newton meters of torque which is about 465 foot pounds so it's no slouch and it's got mid-range torque for days so kind of day-to-day -day driving it's great because you've got effortless power and torque available whenever you need it the car itself is driven through an eight-speed automatic zf gearbox which Anyone who's used the ZF8 speed will know is a great gearbox, so there's zero complaints on that front. Other than that, it's pretty much standard 3 Series from there on out. Obviously, as I mentioned on the exterior, it's got SE springs, and that is solely just due to the fact that it's an X-Drive and it's something to do with the X-Drive system. They don't put M-Performance springs on it, despite it being an actual M-Performance car. Aside from that, it's pretty much standard. So really, the standouts for this car is it's just got a fantastic engine up front, and obviously it's got a four-wheel drive. There used to be a rear-wheel drive equivalent in the 1992, but now you can only get this car in an X-Drive. What's it like to drive? Well, as I mentioned, in town, it's effortless, it's great. You can just leave it in comfort and auto, and, and the car does its job, you know, it, it drives along very nicely. It's a comfortable place to be in terms of... I have finally got to some nicer roads to go and test this car on. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drive up and down this road in comfort and then we're gonna go Sport and Sport Plus. Basically, I wanna test the adaptive system because I've been told in terms of driving dynamics, obviously he's had the, the gearbox, the Alpina flash, so we'll be looking at that. But generally, the focus of this driving section is on the adaptive dampers because I, I know from the short time I've spent in this car, they make one hell of a difference to the way this car handles. So right now I'm in comfort, I'm stuck in traffic, well, I'm stuck behind someone, so can't press on, but straight away, the steering is very light. It doesn't offer any feedback, if I'm completely honest, but it's very similar to the One Series, in that, if you trust it, the car will turn in. You've just got to have that faith that that front axle is planted enough to just be able to turn in. And I think because it's obviously a four-wheel drive in the X-Drive, it allows you to actually go in a little bit hot on the corner and kind of manage that through and lean on the four-wheel drive system, particularly in comfort. I'm 
not sure on the other systems I know when you put it into Sport Plus definitely it's a lot more rear bias and you can really feel that rear bias but yeah let's just go for a little bit of a mirror so in, even in, so I'm in full comfort full auto the gearbox is in D not S and do you know what it's it is very comfortable even on this these back roads here it's I'm on a bumpy road but look turn it in and yeah it just goes you can feel you can feel the power wiggling about as you put your foot down through the corner to try and accelerate out of it you can feel it shuffling the power a little bit I would say this four-wheel drive setup now I imagine it is still 60 40 but the rear bias is definitely less evident in comfort mode but in terms of ride comfort do you know what it's brilliant you it just soaks up all the bumps in the road it's it's very comfortable as i mentioned the steering is a little bit a little bit light it lacks a little bit of feel but in particularly in these conditions so it's it's actually starting to snow outside now but in these conditions it allows you to just press on at pace but also in comfort and i know from a passenger perspective it is also very comfortable which i can't really say for the 140 i must admit as a passenger particularly in the rear on that it's not the most comfortable particularly on a bumpy road so this road's quite bumpy and i know from experience that it can upset the one series whereas this car is literally just taking it in its stride gearbox in terms of flash mapping i'll be honest i can't feel it change it's seamless it drops down quick enough when you need it to so really no complaints from me on that front the four-wheel drive system in here is different it feels different to aldi's implementation of it this feels if i'm honest a lot more electronic <laughs> the brakes are good anyway um yeah it feels a lot more ele electronically assisted the four-wheel drive rather than mechanical it feels a little bit quicker to to pick up those those traction losses and, and shuffle the power around but you know what in comfort all in all it's a nice car it really is as a daily driver this will be an excellent cruiser i imagine it will munch motorway miles easily as well so i think it's time we flip the car around and put it in sport so i flipped the car around and we're now going to head back in sport mode then when we get to the end of this road i'm going to put it in sport plus and see what the major differences is there i'm going to drive a little bit with this in the standard gearbox mode so it's just in sport on the you know mode selector but the gearbox is actually just in drive if it's anything like the one series this should hold on to the gears for slightly longer but still give you that control with your right foot to change up and down as and when straight away though immediately steering's heavier i can feel a lot more of the road so as i mentioned before this is a bumpy road the steering has got heavier but there's not necessarily more feel i imagine the combination of electronic steering and the four-wheel drive system actually don't give it much because like Ardis, you've just got to trust that the car's going to turn in and go where it is and rely on that four-wheel drive a little bit that's the one downside to this car even in sport it still feels a little bit floaty but as i mentioned when we were walking around the outside it does have se springs on it so you can maybe forgive it for that but generally steering feels direct I'm not really being able to get to test this road because i imagine it's raining and people don't want to do more than 30 miles an hour which is a shame but I can feel the difference between, and I know, driving this before we jumped into film, I know there's a difference between, yeah, sport and uh, comfort. 
both in terms of like throttle response, engine mapping, and also suspension comfort, I know there is 100% a difference. And then it's the same again, Sport Plus just basically is the same, but allows you to have a little bit of slip on the rear before the four wheel drive system saves you and powers you out of the corner rapidly. One thing I do like in both Sport and Sport Plus actually, is the fact that you can feel the rear bias from the four wheel drive. It doesn't feel like a boring neutral four wheel drive car that's gonna force you to understeer actually. If you've got any kind of steering lock applied and you put your foot on the accelerator, you can get the car rotated, which is good. But at the same time, it's never unmanageable even on the road. So what the car will do with this X-Drive system is actually make you look like a bit of a hero because you can slide it quite nicely and the X-Drive system just saves you. Well, yeah, that was a shame. Um, because I've not really had the chance to drive it because of this guy in front who's insisted on doing 30 the whole way, I'm going to keep it in sport. I've knocked the gearbox over now to the sport gearbox and straight away it's dropped the gear it, and the throttle response seems to be a bit sharper but that could just be because we are actually in a lower gear. Thank God he's turning right. So we're going to turn left and we're going to go for a little bit of a mooch. It's an old one and that's why. Yes, this uh, this car is quick. So remember, we're only in sport. A little bit of slip, little bit of rotation there, but you can feel it come in and it's easy to manage. To be honest, on that occasion, the traction control managed it entirely for me, so I had to do absolutely nothing other than keep my foot a bit planted. Now I'm able to press on the car just nicely turns in and use the panning power to manage that. Again, turn the car in. Yeah, it, it wants to understeer if you enter a corner too quickly, but if you're sensible with your entry speed, actually, oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, sorry. If you're sensible with your entry speed, actually what it allows you to do is power out quite effectively, meaning you can cover B roads at quite serious pace. But unfortunately, it does just feel that little bit wallowy. It's not quite as sharp as I'd like. What I hope is, and what we'll find out is, do the lowering springs make that much difference? It's not the day for a 911 cab today. This car is effortlessly quick. So turn it in, just get on the power out of the corner. Okay. So this car is quick, <laughs> there is no doubting about that, the way it's just got torque on tap. And I'd imagine, give this car a remap and it is an absolute animal. So that was Sport. I'm now gonna knock it into Sport, plus obviously with the weather, I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious. But what I just wanna do is see and show you guys how it actually manages the slip and like what, what the system allows you to do in combination with the four wheel drive. Obviously, anyone who's got a 140 will know how it behaves in a rear wheel. So, little bit of slip there. But, no dramas. It just literally, no drama whatsoever. There was a little bit of slip and do you know what? If we weren't on a public roundabout, I probably could have pushed it into sliding a little bit. But on public roads, probably not the best idea. Sport Plus definitely makes the car more feel, more rear bias. Hasn't changed the steering, there's still a lack of feel, if I'm completely honest. Traction flashing, and away we go. 
but the way this thing is able to put the power down if I tried to do that in the one series not a chance I'd either be facing the other way or I'd have to let off particularly in this kind of weather it's chucking it down but you know what this is a good car this is a good a really really good car I think for anyone who needs something that little bit more economical let's just chuck it in Obviously the rear tyres aren't the best. This car's no slouch, honestly. So, overall what do I think of it? Obviously I've spent a large proportion of this driving session focusing on drive, the like drive select or you know adaptive dampers and whatnot but the reason I've done that is because I genuinely think it makes a hell of a difference like the difference between comfort and sport is massive slide it but will then easily catch it and the four wheel drive just grips and then you've got an exit in the corner so I think the implementation on this car is is in such a way you can actually enjoy it whilst exploiting that power at the same time so I really really like it so guys I'm going to wrap the video up there we've gone through the exterior and interior spec and then a little bit on what it's like to drive as a car I hope it's been useful for anyone who is interested in maybe making a switch from a 1 Series to a 3. What I would say is this feels a lot more refined. It, it definitely feels more comfortable, more of a cruiser. It, it's, in terms of driving dynamics, I have enjoyed it. it, is a, it it's an alright car. It's wallowy as stock, I would say. Even in Sport and Sport Plus, it still feels a little bit, a little bit wallowy when you're pushing on. But it feels the longer wheelbase means it feels more predictable to drive, particularly when you've got it in Sport Plus on conditions like this. Though, I don't know what else will come close apart from another four-wheel drive car. And I think actually, if you were to compare an Audi to this, you'd probably have a little more fun in this. The engine is a masterpiece, power and torque at any point. ZF8 speed, we know, don't need to go into that, but actually it's been enhanced with this new flash it's got on it. It holds the gears a lot longer. It's, it's instant on up and down in manual. So overall, I think it's a really, really good car. And obviously this is quite a highly spec car. So if you're able to get something similar, go for it. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap up there. That's that's a quick overview of the car. But basically, this car will be back on the channel in probably three, four weeks time when we'll take it out for another drive and we'll look at the impact the lower the eye back lowering springs have had on on that ride. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any comments, leave them below. Give us a thumbs up so I know you've liked the video, and I will catch you all very soon. Cheers.